you just wait right yeah. here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I go with my wife and yeah, come back. Okay. All right? Yeah. Hello, welcome. Hello, welcome. Hello, welcome.
Now, lovely people, welcome on the flagship tour. Uh, my name is Stan. Today, I'll be telling some stories, some fun facts, and uh, some things about Amsterdam. Uh, I can answer any question here if what you have to ask. And if I don't know, I always have my good friend Google in my pocket. <laughs> now, I'm not the most important person on the There is, of course, another awesome captain here. You'll be driving us through Amsterdam, but we do have some safety guidelines and it has to do with the open windows. When are you sitting at an open window, please keep your hands and uh, arms inside of the boat. Our captain is an awesome captain, but for example, the people behind you, as you can see, they can't really drive that well, so <laughs> they might hit you. Also, we like to call this beautiful boat a female and the bridges males, as sometimes they like to kiss. When you interfere with love, you get crushed. So, and my third and final rule is smile and have fun. We'll start the story shortly. Uh, if you need anything now, just uh, say Stan, that's my name, and I'll uh, be happy for you. Thank you, Stan. So guys,
guys, welcome in Amsterdam. Uh, and I'll begin a little bit with, about the history of Amsterdam. Amsterdam was founded in 1206, and it was founded here because of the Amstel River. The Amstel River is the only natural body of water flowing through Amsterdam. You always, the rest is all artificial and was dug out by hand. Uh, but because of this river, the land around it back in the day was really fertile. So being a farmer all around this river was a good option. You could grow a lot of crops. But it was so fertile that it became a swamp. So trying to farm cows and pigs was impossible uh, because they would literally sink into the swamp. So we had to think of another thing to get our protein and that was being a fisherman. It was a fishing town because Amsterdam was back in the day a seaside city. Out of Amsterdam you could walk uh, sail onto the sea. Now that was basically it during the 1200, 1300s and beginning 1400s. It was even barbaric, the Romans didn't care to invade this land. But in the 1400s that changed all when the Spanish took over this land. Uh, the Spanish made this land for the first time in its history a cohesive country. And here in Amsterdam we actually didn't mind the fact that we were part of the Spanish Empire. Because the Spanish grew this city into a global trading hub. We got not how to sail around the world and how to trade around the world. And so we started doing it ourselves. But doing so we started to make a lot of money and this little village started to grow into the city. Now, the, at one point the Spanish started to get a little bit jealous. So they started raising the taxes. Now you need to know one thing about a Dutch person. When we need to pay money, we don't like that. We like free stuff. So we rebelled, of course, and we created our own country for the first time, the Netherlands. And with this, we started to make a lot of money. To give you guys a little bit of an indication, uh, the wine glasses you are drinking out of now, if that was filled with peppercorn, almost halfway, something we put on our food now every day as pepper, we, you would be able to afford an entire kettle house here. And of course we didn't bring one wine glass, no, we brought tons and ships. So you can imagine how rich we got. As, so, and that attracted a lot of people. Also, because we have freedom of religion, we were the first country in the world to do so. So merchants who didn't believe in capitalism in their own country would get put on the burning stake, or for example, or that head would be chopped off. Here in Amsterdam, they could do whatever they wanted. So uh, it grew, and in the course of 100 years, this city tripled in size. So of course, we had to accommodate them all. So mid 1600s, the construction of the three main, main canals were started. Those are the Lord's Canal, the Emperor's Canal, and the Prince's Canal. The Heerengracht, the Prinsengracht and the Keizersgracht. Now, if you just thought somebody turned on the blender, that, that's just the Dutch language for you. Uh, this construction actually took a hundred years, hundred years plus. So when they were finished, the city had already grown out of the canal system and was expanding outwards. So at the end, they were just not quick enough. Now every canal has a different function. And this canal, the Prinsen Canal, the canal we're in right now on, was mainly used for trade. And we can see this by a few factors. The first one is, is the height of the site. This is really low, and this was to accommodate the barges that would be, would be dragged into the city. And these barges would be the same level as the streets, and then it was easy to upload your uh, products. Now back in the day you only had sailing power in the 1860s, 1700s, so all these boats were dragged in by horse. But at the bridges, that meant that you had to detach the ropes. So, while now going under the bridges, we can see the handles, big strong men would grab and pull themselves to the other side of the bridge, and then they would attach the ropes again. That's also why the lanterns and all the trees that you see alongside the canals are actually out of the 1900s. But be be because before that, you, 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 sorry, you didn't need to obstruct the way of the ropes. Our second thing we can find on this canal and that shows that it was used for trade are the storage houses. We can identify the storage houses by two things. They're really narrow and they have big openings in the middle. And this had to do with our tax system. Back in the day you paid tax on the width of your house, the amount of windows and the amount of stairs. So you want to avoid uh, paying a lot of taxes as a merchant. You already paid for your ship and the expedition. So what you, what you do, you make your house really narrow and you make big openings in the middle without glass. If it was an opening without glass, it was not a window, so you didn't pay tax on it. What they did do, they put uh, wooden shutters in front of it to protect it against the elements. And this was all good to avoid tax, but it was one problem. 
if you build your house really narrow, your staircase becomes narrow. So trying to get all these spices up was impossible. So we thought of a solution. And maybe you have seen it throughout the city. It is the beam and hook. With the beam and hook, we hoisted everything up via a pulley system, a rope and a wheel. That was in the 1800s with spices. Nowadays, we still actually use this because when people get new furniture, for example, couches, they won't through, fit through those narrow staircases. So they hoist up the couch into their houses. And why didn't, we, why didn't we store everything in the basement? That would be easier, right? Well, that had to do with the sea. Because we had a sea, we had tidal changes. So on high tide, sometimes the water would raise above the streets, especially because of the low sidewalk, and the streets would flood. It's also the main reason why you see that every house here, almost every house, has a little staircase above the fr front door because they wanted to keep the, f the first level dry. This is also why this canal is called the poor man's canal because all the workers that work in these storage houses, they live in the basement. So you can imagine when a flood happened during the night, that was a nasty thing because nobody, everybody drowned. Referring to this country, do you say I'm going to the Netherlands or I'm going to Holland? Netherlands. Netherlands. Yeah. Anyone says Holland here? Oh well, you have a smart quote then. Uh, but you maybe heard of people calling this country Holland, right? It's a bit odd, a country that has several names. Um, for example, this French also call us Pays Bas. The Spanish have also a different name for us. Um, and it's all had to do with this rebellion against the Spanish. This rebellion took about 80 years. And after that we became a republic, a republic of its first kind. We're also the first country in the world to write a bill of independence. Uh, the same bill of independence actually that the Americans copied or were inspired by to write theirs. Um, but when you create a country, you have to think of a name. So they thought of no a short name, no an entire sentence. The name was the seven United Provinces of the Republic of the Lowlands. The last part, Lowland, was the reason why the Spanish and the French call us different things because Piva means low land. Now that is the English translation. So here comes the official Dutch translation. The seven republiquer provincies der lage Nederlanden. Now that was an entire country's name. So where does Holland then come from? Well, imagine being a sailor. You come out of all the main ports here in the Netherlands, and we're all located in the province of Holland. Those are Rotterdam, The Hague, and Amsterdam. You go out to sail, most of the time as a sailor, you were drunk back in the day, and you have to say that entire name. Impossible. So they just said Holland. It was easier. And also, uh, they were proud of Holland. Holland made the most money back in the day. We still like to say it nowadays, uh, but they were just proud of it. But just to clarify you guys, right now you're in Amsterdam. That is the capital of the province of North Holland. 
and Lord of Holland is in the country of the Netherlands that is part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Still confused, right? <laughs> Thank you. 